Few things get Ontarians going the way weather and traffic do. Mary Baxter covers the southwestern part of this province for our Ontario hubs, and she joins us now on the line from our studio at Western University in London on why everyone is talking about roundabouts. Welcome to the show. Hi, JN. It's good to be here. Now, you were talking about roundabouts, or some people know them as traffic circles. Are they, they're not your friendly neighborhood traffic calm, calmer, are they? Well, actually, they can be. Uh, but more often, roundabouts, uh, you think about them in terms of, uh, they, they would be in the intersections that traffic lights would normally go into. So they actually might handle a large volume of traffic. And uh, in your article on TVO.org, it's looking at the Waterloo, re the Waterloo region. There's 40 of them there. What's the strategy behind that? Well, actually, the first roundabout in Waterloo Region was introduced in 2004. I think it was the first roundabout in Ontario. And there's a couple of reasons why Waterloo Region has, has embraced them. Uh, but before I get to that, I just want to mention that in Waterloo Region, there are 3,000 intersections. So when we're talking 40 roundabouts, that's actually not a lot. But some of them are in really high-profile areas, so there's, there's a lot of awareness about them. And they introduced them. I, one reason is because roundabouts keep cars moving. There's no traffic light there, so cars aren't going to stop. I, and because of that, it means that the roads that are on roundabouts can actually handle larger traffic volumes without having to go up in the number of lanes. So they're, they can be economical, even though they, they cost a bit more to introduce because they need more land. So they often cost a little bit more than regular traffic lights. Uh, but they can mean uh, longer term savings. And then the other big reason is, is that they're considered to be safer. Uh, they, they tend to reduce the, the, the number of severe accidents. Uh, so I'm thinking of things like T-bones or you know, left-hand turns. They're, they're considered to be quite high risk and you, you just you don't do left-hand turns on a roundabout. I'm curious, you're talking about safety. Uh, what happens when there's mixed traffic use? I'm talking cars, bikes, pedestrians, buses, large trucks. What happens when all of those are at play? That is, that is one of the issues with roundabouts. Uh, even with people who support them, they, they point out that they're, they're sometimes not the best to have different modes of travel on them. And there's a psychological reason to that. So if, if you think about a roundabout again, people are driving through them, they're expecting to keep moving. If all of a sudden you have to stop because there's a pedestrian crossing, it, it just kind of it's hard to compute, if you know what I mean. And in uh, Waterloo Region, this, this has been uh, a concern with, with some of the roundabouts that have been introduced. One with, that was introduced uh, in, in front of a school, the, the year that it was introduced, they actually had uh, uh, one of the students, she was hit uh, by a bus and uh, her leg was broken. So yeah, there's some concerns about that. Now. I've traveled across Ontario over the last couple of years and uh, in our TVO vehicle, and there's occasions where we'll come across a roundabout. And I will admit there are some times where it's kind of anxiety inducing because you don't know what, where to go, what's going to happen. I imagine there is a little bit of that when it comes to other drivers. Is there any kind of training or any kind of uh, rules for, for people that when they come across a roundabout that they should know about? Well, that's one of the things that happens uh, in the communities and the governments that embrace roundabouts is that they try to uh, introduce an educational campaign. Uh, so, for instance, in the Waterloo region, you can go to their website and find out information on how to drive on a web on on a roundabout. But you know, the other thing is is that often you'll find just before you enter a roundabout, you'll see a sign that tells you, okay, these are the things that you're supposed to do. So if you're experiencing some anxiety and you're not quite sure, have a look at that sign before you start heading in. Uh, one last question for you, Mary Baxter. I just want to know, do you prefer the roundabout or do you prefer the traditional kind of stop sign with traffic lights? You know, I'm roundabout friendly. Uh, Southwestern <laughs> Ontario and Western Ontario, there's a lot of roundabouts here, so I'm used to driving them. But I also lived overseas for a while, and I got used to driving roundabouts there. So for me, it makes no difference. I, I actually kind of like them. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mary Baxter. That's Mary Baxter, our Ontario Hub journalist for Southwestern Ontario. Always a pleasure to have you on the show. Good to chat with you, JN.
The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. CPA Ontario is a regulator, an educator, a thought leader, and an advocate. We protect the public. We advance our profession. We guide our CPAs. We are CPA Ontario. And by viewers like you. Thank you.